It is distinctive. It's spicy. It's red. It's chili. It's sticky. It's sweet. It's delicious. It's addictive. It is the intense aroma of chilies and fermentation and it is something that I can eat with every meal. I grew up with gochujang as like my ketchup. It was literally, we put it on everything and it was so much a part of my identity growing up that when I went to culinary school and I started cooking, uh, you know, in New York, I cooked mostly French food. And so that whole world sort of became shell. It was like, that's the world that I grew up with, but it's not what I cook as a um, professional chef. So many years later, my chef's friends and I would go out drinking in New York. And we would end up and say, well, what are we going to eat? And I would always be like, listen, we can go to Koreatown. They're open 24 hours. And you can get all this great stews and barbecue beef. And my chef friends would be like, oh my god, what is this kimchi? What is this gochujang? And so I find myself explaining to all these American chefs what all this stuff was, because they all loved it. And it turned out they would start going to Koreatown without me. Rice bowl. This is the gochujang. Taste that. It is like barbecue sauce. It's like the most delicious spicy barbecue sauce. Nice. This is your seafood bowl. Barbecue pork. This is a dish that came from the Korean War. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of uh, sausage and pate stuff going on in here. <laughs> this is various forms of pureed meat. This literally translates into spicy stew. This is a little hotter, yeah? This is my favorite. It's hot. Huh? So far, got it. So this is actually my favorite thing to eat of, of all Korean foods. It's a chilled um, noodle. Whoa. And it's spicy. Yeah, it is. This noodle dish is my favorite. Yeah. Look at that. You guys are officially Korean for this. Cheers, cheers, cheers. 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 I really love watching when chefs their mind starts spinning, going, wait a second, I could do this, this is bouillabaisse, this is this. In that moment, they get transported right back into their own kitchens. I want to do a little experiment with you, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, totally. I have three different kinds of gochujang, and I want you to taste them yeah. before we actually go and cook with them. This one here is made with rice flour, so it's actually a gluten-free version. Yep. The one in the middle is made with wheat flour, and this one is made with wheat flour, but it's also extra spicy. It's sort of doubled up the amount of chilies in there. For me, the, the rice flour is a lot cleaner. You know, the season nicely, texture's smooth, the spice is there. I'd say it's about a five or six on the spice level. There's some sweetness going on, a little bit of this natural smokiness from the chilies, I think. Mm -hmm. This one, you're gonna get a little bit more complexity. The wheat sort of reacts a little differently. Pretty cool. And then this is the big mama. This is the fire, huh? Look at it texturally. This is more chilies or what? Yeah. Spicy, huh? <laughs> you're starting to sweat a little, right? <laughs> Bryce innately understands flavor in a way that's surprising and wonderful. He saw gochujang, he tasted it, he thought about it, and he immediately went to mackerel, which is great because that's immediately what my grandmother would have done. We're gonna take some of this gochujang, I'm gonna spread it all in here. Mm -hmm. You know, something that's cool about the gochujang is that it, it, it really caramelizes, you know? I think it has that natural sugar, so you can really get good color with this thing, too. You know, what's incredible is the gochujang that you put on the outside uh -huh. is completely like charred up the skin. Yeah. And, and you almost, it's almost disappeared and become this just charred element. And I'm excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> well, so this is exactly how Koreans would eat this. With like a beer, some soju. Holy smokes. It's so nice. And uh, this is my yeah. version of the uh, Korean barbecue. It's amazing, <laughs> amazing. I love it. I'm gonna riff off what you were just doing and do sort of my own kind of barbecue. Basically, I'm gonna take the concept of sort of a yakitori skewers, but I wanna add some gochujang, you know. Um, and I'm gonna use the gluten-free guy. 
So I'm gonna squeeze a little bit more out of the jar. I'm gonna start with sesame oil. This is honey. A little bit of lemon juice. Throw a little bit of water in it. I think I'm gonna pull the skin off, actually. I could just put, put the sauce in the skin and just grill that. <laughs> that. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. I found some beautiful summer squash, like that. I'm gonna grill and turn. Do you wanna help me brush? Yeah, there you go. As we cook it, we're just gonna keep touching it with the gochujang and just gonna like caramelize. We, we look at this and it's, it, to me, it comes from such an Asian um, tradition and yet the way I eat this, the way I look at it, it, to me, it's so American at the same time. It's like, you said it, like, I think this and I think football. Mm. The fat with the chili. This has been a real treat. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to have you. What George does and what I do, I think, are very similar. I cook mostly Korean. George finds something that's European, and yet tastes to me like Korean. So basically, we're just gonna start with uh, tomatoes, red and yellow tomatoes that I've already washed, cut in half. Cucumbers that are peeled, seeded, yeah. uh, sliced raw white onions, the bell peppers, some celery, day-old bread. So that's a lot of garlic. Yeah, we're, yeah. We're, not, we're not shy on the, on the garlic in, in Portugal whatsoever. Olive oil and then uh, vinegar. So that just gets all dressed up. I don't know if you could do this with just any old hot sauce. No, you couldn't. It would just it's add It's the to fermentation much. that you talked about that's gonna have that, that umami, that other level of, of flavor yeah. that you don't get in just like a bottle of, of a normal hot sauce. And then this, this breaks down overnight. Mm. I really loved seeing how he took gochujang and turned it into a gazpacho. It was still Portuguese, it was still gazpacho, but it just had this little haunting layer of flavor. I'm gonna do something with butter and gochujang. The original inception of that condiment to me was, hey listen, I'm gonna turn gochujang into a butter and it's gonna be like a gateway drug for people who wanna learn about gochujang. Today I'm gonna cook some fish with it. Let's throw a little mushrooms in the pan. Asparagus rounds. Just gonna kind of throw in the pan as well. You know, and this is very French. Like, I'm just gonna add yep. some butter to the pan and just yeah. like kind of let it melt on there. Nice. Oh man. Yeah. It's so vibrant. Mm. It's really flavorful in that one bite. Really, I really, really love cool. your perspective on it, man. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Pleasure, man. Cheers. Awesome, yeah. Hey, stop working out. Your arm and your grip is Oh, sorry. <laughs> The same ingredient in this bacha is the same ingredient that was in Amanda's Korean fried broccoli. Two completely different dishes, same ingredient. That's wild to see it. Oh my god, look how pretty that is. All right, so that is our Korean fried broccoli, otherwise known as our KFB. You dip it, dip it in the batter, deep fry it, and then toss it in that. Toss it in the, it's pulled straight from the fryer with all okay. the oil sort of attached to it yeah, still. Yeah, yeah. Uh, gets dropped into the hot sauce, tossed in that. Oh my god, <laughs> it's so good. The gochujang actually makes it really nice because it's not too spicy. Yeah. So you still get to taste all the flavors, but you're not hit over the head with this sort of like, I can't, your your palate is uh, blown out. I would rather eat this than the Korean fried one. And you know, it's a little good for you because it has the broccoli in it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I think gochujang has the potential to be in every single person's refrigerator. The first and foremost thing about it is that most people, when they taste it, they fall in love with it. And I think that's what Jordana's sentiment was. It's like, this is just really good sauce. And so it's unfamiliar, and we might not know how to quite use it yet, but as we do and as we educate ourselves, we fall more and more in love with it, and then it just becomes natural to share it with our friends, with our other colleagues, with our mothers and parents and relatives, and then that's when you see the explosion happen. Mm, it's good. It's delicious. It's good. Mm. I feel like gochujang is, a, is one of those condiments that like has a place in the American mm -hmm. cooking vernacular because it kind of has some things that Americans love to eat. It's mm -hmm. like 
a little funky mm -hmm. and garlicky, and it's like a, a flavor that really insists upon itself. Like yeah. it's like super, super present yeah. when you cook with it. I think that, and I can't predict the future, but I do know one thing. Um, I have seen um, very, very clearly the trend for people wanting food to be spicier. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, from a decade ago, from two decades ago when I started cooking, no one wanted their food spicy. And now, it seems like you can't give them enough spice. People are craving spice, and I can't, I don't know why that is. Mm -hmm. Listen, it, 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 I don't think gochujang is gonna be the end all and be all, but it's gonna be in that discussion. As a chef, I sometimes don't wanna see it get so popular, because I use it so much and it's so near and dear to me and for the longest time it's been my secret weapon in my back pocket. I was always able to make things taste better by adding a little bit of it into something and everyone's like, man, this is so good, what'd you do to it? I'm like, I'm not telling you. Now the secret's out, so everyone's like, yeah, you just put some gochujang in it. I'm like, yeah, and it doesn't seem as like, you know, it, it seemed like I was like doing this magical thing to it and really it was like just a tablespoon of gochujang. So from a chef's standpoint, I kind of wanted to keep it my secret, but I really Realize that the secret's out, so um, it, it's the, the natural progress of things. Personally, and as a Korean person, it's just fun, man. It's just fun to see this ingredient that I grew up with that, that no one knew about and ever, no one wanted to eat when I was a kid. It was weird, it was funky, it was nasty, and now it has the potential to go far beyond what Korean food is. For as many creative ways as I use gochujang, there's so many more that I haven't even thought of, and that's the job of other chefs.